Hello and welcome to Soft Papers channel. I'm Godfrey. Um, in this video, I'm solving a coverage AS physics uh, paper on uh, momentum. This is a 2019 June ex uh, examination series. As we continue, uh, I also encourage you, uh, for I consider you are watching this video as you prepare for your forthcoming 2021 uh, AS uh, physics exams. So I encourage you to consider doing your revision uh, topic wise. Read a given topic and come uh, here to attempt the questions uh, when you are the content that or uh, you've read of that topic is still fresh in your mind. Uh, this way you'll get uh, the most out of the topic. Uh, this is a sure way of getting a uh, star if that is what you're looking for. Um, you can get this topic or questions uh, from this uh, site here, uh, solvedpapers.co.uk. You can get both topicals and uh, past papers as well. Um, let's get started. And if you have not already subscribed to my channel, uh, please click the subscribe button and hit the bell icon. Uh, this way you will be notified every time I upload a new uh, video. Now, um, I'll be telling you which uh, paper, this question, the question that we are, topical questions we are set, uh, we are solving was set. And this was paper 2-1 of May, June uh, 2019. And this was question number one. Of course, uh, 9702, this is the code for A-level physics. Um, so let's get started. Number one, a block, a block X, this block X here, slides along horizontal frictionless surface uh, towards a stationary block Y, as illustrated in Fig 2.1. This is stationary. The surface is uh, frictionless. There are no resistive force acting on block X as it moves towards X. There's no, there is in an opposition, even air friction is not here, air resistance is not there. At a time, t is equals to zero, block x has a momentum of 0 0.40 kilogram per meters, uh, um, meter per second. A short time later, the block, the blocks collide and then separate. Elastic collision. Okay. The variation with Time t of the momentum of block y is shown in fig 2.2. This figure, this fig 2.2, fig 2.2. This is block y. Okay. All right. Momentum against time. Momentum against time here. This is time in milliseconds. Uh, this is um, momentum. Uh, this is block Y. Okay. Um, what's the question here? Define linear momentum. Define linear momentum. Of course, momentum is equals to mass times velocity. So just write momentum is product of mass of an object and Momentum is product of mass of object and velocity of an object. Okay. Uh, B. Use Fig 2.2 to determine the time interval over which the blocks are in contact with each other. Time interval blocks are in contact with each other okay let's go to that fig there okay so the time interval uh, when the blocks are in contact with each other is up to this point there here x uh, y was not moving it was still stationary all right and then of course uh, once they collide you can see the speed of y is increasing from zero to 0 
zero then it starts moving at constant speed so at this time the speed is increasing from zero that is the time the blocks are in contact so we are using this to determine uh, that therefore um, in contact the contact is during this period from zero uh, from 60 uh, milliseconds to 100 milliseconds so the time interval is 100 minus 60 which gives you uh, 40 milliseconds that is the answer here so um, 100 minus 60 is equals to 40 milliseconds so the time interval is 40 milliseconds um, B part 2 describe without calculation the magnitude of the acceleration of block y from 80 to t is equals 80 milliseconds to t is equals to 100 milliseconds um, magnitude calculate with uh, describe without calculation the magnitude of the acceleration of course the um, can see from t to t is 80 to t is equals to 100 um, you can see the graph is a constant it's a straight line from here this part this part is a straight line so the magnitude is the acceleration is constant and therefore this uh, this is um, from the slope you can see that the slope of the graph at that point at that time interval at uh, the slope um, is a straight line. The slope is a straight line. Therefore, you to describe the magnitude, you can say that uh, we have a constant acceleration. Constant acceleration. Don't forget, this is a um, this is a momentum and uh, this is time all right so um, this part is the motion of the uh, of the graph of of, the, of block y and basically it is accelerating okay before it attains to constant uh, momentum up here so constant acceleration described without calculation the magnitude all right and what about um, t is 100 to t is uh, 120? t is 100 to 120. What is the magnitude of the acceleration? The acceleration is zero. Acceleration is zero because if momentum is constant and momentum is equals to mass times velocity, mass um, is the same and also velocity is the same so that uh, from t is 100 to t is uh, 120 uh, we have constant momentum and if momentum is constant it means that velocity is also constant and if velocity is constant uh, if v is constant if v is constant velocity is constant and then um, acceleration is equals to zero so you can say here uh, describe the moment uh, the magnitude of acceleration acceleration is zero right of course this from the graph is horizontal horizontal means constant momentum constant momentum means constant velocity therefore that is zero there Part C, use Fig 2.2 to determine the magnitude of the force exalted by block X on block Y. The force that block X will uh, exert on block Y. Of course, when you're dealing with the momentum, we know that force is equal to change in momentum over time, or over change in time. All right? Um, the change in momentum of y is also equal to change in momentum of um, of uh, x. Okay, 
Okay, we are told x is traveling at this 0 0.4 kilogram per meter squared, I mean per meter. So um, it is here for 0 0.4 kilogram. And um, we know that, you uh, um, can see the graph here, uh, the constant momentum for block Y is uh, 0 0.5, right? And therefore, we can find the, the change in momentum. The change in momentum is uh, the gradient of this line here. So the change in momentum here is uh, 60. Um, and zero, the coordinates, and here is a uh, is a hundred and zero point five, right? So the change in momentum here is basically um is basically uh, zero point five minus zero over, of course. Uh, this is a uh, from here. Um, this is sixty, so uh, this is going to be a uh, hundred uh, minus sixty, which is going to be forty. So uh, forty milliseconds. When you do that, then you get um, uh, forty milliseconds is zero point five mm -hmm. over forty times ten raised to power minus three. Uh, this will give you thirteen. Uh, thirteen. Uh, um newtons of course um the change in momentum is uh, from 0 to 0 0.5 okay and of course the time that it took to change that momentum is that so the change in momentum here is 0 0.5 minus 0 and the time that it took to change that momentum is uh, 40 um times 10 raised to power 3, this will give us 13 newtons. So the answer here is 13, 13 newtons. I don't need to write that, it's already there. On fig 2.2, sketch the variation of momentum block x from t is equals to, uh, time t is equals, time t from t is equals to 0 to t is equals to around 60 milliseconds, 160 milliseconds, right, so the momentum was constant initially, okay, um, and we know that um, um, we are told the momentum of x is 0 0.4, so initially the momentum was, um, was constant, therefore, um, we need to plot that, but before we bl plot that, we need to know after collision what is the momentum of block X. So we know that momentum before collision is equal to momentum after collision. And we know for block X, momentum is 0 0.4 plus momentum of block Y, which was stationary, is 0. After collision, uh, we want to find the momentum of X because we already know the momentum of Y, which is 0 0.5 can see that from the graph here. The momentum of y block y after collision, it was 0 0.5 right there. Okay, uh, right there. So, um, so we find x. So x, x will be um, 0 0.4 minus 0 0.5 and this will be minus 0 0.1 uh, kilogram meter per second uh, of course uh, means that x moved in the opposite direction but uh, essentially of course momentum of x after collision block x is basically 0 0.1 that's what we, move, we plot right here um, we plot that right here. So um, the momentum is this until uh, it's a penny. The momentum of X is 0 0.4, so they collide at 60. 60 is 
there okay so momentum is that until there then uh, from there of course uh, 0.1 at 100 uh, come here 0 0.1 is there 0 0.1 yeah so this will come straight come straight like this up to here remember the uh, momentum is a vector quantity and therefore continue at constant momentum up to that so momentum is a vector quantity that's why now uh, for momentum of x after collision is minus zero uh, minus zero point one so you should indicate that so that's uh that's it for the sketching you sketch the variation of momentum of block x uh from t is equals to zero to t is equals to sixty uh you've done that right there all right um Question number two. Um, before we get to question number two, uh, let me also let you know that um, working out these questions yourself will be a positive uh, thing. Watching, a video, watching this video is great. I'm happy you're watching the video, but I encourage you to learn um, by working out the question yourself. Um, you can get this um, same paper I'm solving right now from this site softwarepass.co.uk uh, the site i'm talking about is this one here i can show you that it is this side here um, this is the size the site i'm talking about uh, if i go to home so that you see this is the site i'm talking about so solvedpapers.co.uk uh, i need you to come to a level physics of course there's maths and chemistry uh, 2019 soft papers here right you get to soft papers here of course, this is um, 2019 June. You come down here. It is um, uh, momentum. Come down here. Momentum is here. So you need to click this. Uh, of course, um, you'll find this in a uh, in a Z folder. Uh, the Z folder is um, uh, this one that I'm um, referring to here. So 2019 uh, June. June is uh, down here. Uh, this is air to air structured so 2019 june air structured you will need to click here uh, to get this uh, basically you need to ask your parents to acquire you to help you acquire these papers uh, it's crucially important it's only 10 pounds 10 pounds is not a lot of money get that and get as many as you can you also can get for um for november and uh, also for other years 2018 do as much practice as you can uh, this will make your life easy when you are doing or you are in the middle of an exam when you've done enough practice or you can get them all at a discount yeah it will all depend with you and um, still when we are uh, we are still at that um, I can also help you if you need my assistance I also do online tuition I also do online tuition on this site we call it SP Academy .co.uk uh, this is the site I'm talking about let me show you this is the site I'm talking about so SP Academy is basically soft papers academy we are the guys who solve these papers we have been solving this paper over a period of time we have got an experience we know what the examiner wants take time to go through this uh, site and uh, get familiar with uh, the site but I need you to first check the student guide a step by step uh, a student guide on your dashboard you can also watch this video to get familiar with our online uh, live classes. And uh, after you have made up your mind, I need you to uh, come here and register. Uh, of course, um, you will create your own account. We will send you an email which you need to activate your account. Then you can come and sign in. And then you can, in your dashboard, you can find a tutor. Uh, my name is Godfrey. If you get in touch with me, I'll be able to help you. Of course, um, if it's a one-on-one -on -one, um, student, um, I'll charge you a small price of 35 per hour. There are people who are charging 100, 100, 100 uh, pounds, 
Um, mine is only 35. This doesn't mean that I am lesser than those who are charging that much. I just want to be realistic. Uh, if you come with your three friends, so that you are four students at a, in one given time, I'll only charge 25 pounds. 25 pounds per hour. So give me a try and let me help you get your study grades. Uh, you'll be happy later in your life. Uh, so let's continue with question number two. Question number two. This question number two uh, was from uh, March, uh, paper 2-2, two, two, and uh, it was question number three, as you can see right there. So question number two. Uh, two balls, X and Y, move along a horizontal frictionless surface as illustrated. Uh, y is, uh, um, X is moving towards east, and uh, Y is moving towards uh, northwest, and um, they collide. They are moving in opposite directions. Uh, ball X has an initial velocity of 3 meters per second in a direction along line AB. Line AB is this one. Ball Y has a mass of 2.5 kilograms and an initial velocity of 9.6 meters per second in a direction to an angle of 60 degrees to line AB. Okay, 60 degrees to line AB, this 60 degrees. Therefore, it's the same as 60 degrees right there. You can see that. Okay, 60 degrees, let me try to clear it. To line AB, okay. So this is line AB, so 60 degrees to that line AB. The two balls collide at B, at point B. They will collide at this point here. The balls stick together and then travel along the horizontal surface in a direction at a right angle to the line AB. So they stick together and move in this direction to right angle to line AB. That's the information you're given. In a direction at right angles to the line AB as shown. Okay, okay, it's already shown here. Okay. Uh, by considering, that is A, by considering the components of momentum in the direction uh, from A to B, show that ball X has a mass of zero, I mean 4.0 kilograms. Okay. Um, we know that after collision, we know that after collision, After collision, the balls, um, the direction of the balls um, is 90. So after collision, uh, they stick together. They stick together and go at a direction of 90 degrees. So the component of the horizontal, so the component of um, horizontal motion horizontal, actually momentum, not motion, horizontal momentum after collision is zero, after collision is zero, the horizontal component is zero, so um, before collision, before collision, um, the momentum of X um, is equals to mass times the speed of x, which is 3 meters per second. We are told that uh, 3 meters per second. All right. Uh, this is horizontal. The momentum before collision horizontally is 3 uh, times m times 3. And for y, horizontally, uh, the momentum is 2.5. Uh, that is the speed of y, that is the mass of y, okay, times the velocity, uh, which is 9.6 at an angle of uh, 60, all right, so uh, we want the horizontal component, okay, this horizontal component of y, okay, of course it is in this direction actually, all right, because it's moving in this direction, so the horizontal component of this y is uh, basically um, h y, I mean um, y h, this part of the triangle, and it is adjacent to this, so it's going to be cos, so it's going to be cos 60 
uh, degrees is equals to yh over 9.6 so y horizontal is 9.6 cos uh, 60 degrees that is what we bring down here so the um, um, so before collision momentum is for y for x is mass times 3 and this one is mass times 9.6 cos 60 degrees and um, uh, the horizontal motion of y is opposite to x before collision all right so you should not take note of that uh, that is a um, horizontal uh, momentum um, or motion of y is opposite to that of x uh, opposite x before they collide they move in opposite direction so it's like an add-on collision although it at an angle although at an angle so um since we had said that after collision they stick together and move at an angle of 90 and we are saying that um, the component of horizontal momentum after collision for both is zero then we equalize this we had uh, m times 3 right minus 2.5 because it's in the opposite direction uh, times 9.6 cos 60 degrees is equals to zero therefore this is 3m minus of course when you multiply this you get uh, 12 minus 12 is equals to zero 3m is equals to 12 m is equals to 4 um, kilogram what we are supposed to show are uh, four kilogram right there so we have shown that uh, very well um, now part b calculate the common speed v of the two balls after the collision so um, we can see that x has no initial vertical component x has because it is moving horizontally uh, has no initial vertical component is only y which has got the initial vertical component so um, the component of y vertically y vertical is equals to 2.5 times 9.6 six um sin sin sixty degrees I can show you that in the diagram here I can come here so this is the vertical component of y that we are looking for you can see how uh, y vertical is opposite to sixty so um, then y vertical should be of course this is a right angle triangle here we consider it here Okay, this is the hypotenuse which is 9.6 right there so um, uh, y vertical is equals to um, sorry uh, let me start it from the angle here uh, sine 60 degrees is equals to uh, y vertical over the hypotenuse which is 9.6 therefore y vertical will be uh, 9.6 sine 60 degrees right um so to get the momentum the vertical direction we take the mass of y 2.5 times the y vertical the component of uh, the y um motion so 2.5 right so once you calculate that uh you'll get um uh whatever but you know that now momentum before momentum before is equals to momentum after collision the momentum before collision is equal to momentum after uh, collision and we have already said that um, x does not have a vertical component so zero plus before collision is for y this is for x so for y is 2.5 times 9.6 sine 60 
is equals to um, the vertical component of uh, both because they are moving at the same velocity. Um, so we had calculated um, the mass of y, mass of x is, uh, we have shown the mass of x is 4 and um, we know the mass of y is 2.5 times the common velocity that they are uh, moving. That is what you are supposed to calculate. So then, therefore, this um, uh, means that um, uh, V is equals to, uh, of course, you divide both sides by this, 2.5 times 9.6 sine 60 degrees, divide by this plus this is 6.5, 6.5. Of course, when you work out uh, nicely, you get V is 1.9 meters per second. Of course, approximately... 3.2 meters per second that is the common velocity right um, part C determine the difference between the initial kinetic energy of ball X and the initial kinetic energy of ball Y of course um, kinetic energy for X is equals to half times the mass, which is 4, times the speed, which is 3 squared, right? This times this is 2, 2 times this, which is 18, okay? 18 joules. And kinetic energy of Y is equals to half times the mass of Y, which is 2.5, times the speed of Y, which is 9.6 squared, and this should give you 115.2 uh, joules. 0.2 joules. So we have to determine the difference. The difference is um, uh, subtraction. So kinetic energy of energy of y minus kinetic energy of x is equals to 115.2 minus 18. And when you do it correctly, you get 97.2 joules, approximately 97 joules. Uh, very well, that's the end of this uh, paper. As I've indicated, you can get this paper to practice on uh, from soft papers and many more other topic, uh, topical questions, uh, plus uh, also past papers, both and soft and also solved. So get all these uh, resources, they will be of help to you as you prepare for your uh, physics AS exams which are coming 20, 21 June or even March. Uh, thanks a lot for keeping me company. Hopefully I'll see you in my next uh, video. Uh, cheers and take care.